15th. The counselors could please put their attendance in the chat. That'd be appreciated. And move on to approval of the agenda. So as always, the agenda is set out in advance. So hopefully everybody's had a chance to look at it. So if there's any amendments or proposals or amendments to the agenda, now's your time. So we move to approve the agenda. Is everybody, is anybody opposed to approving the agenda? Sorry, could you say that in the mic? I didn't hear you. Dan, didn't you have like an add-on? Because I, I remember we were in SAB. I remember what it was though. Uh, I just remember. Oh, moving. Oh, moving public comments. We were going to move public comment up if there was an addition. If there was public comments here today, it doesn't look like there is. So we'll just continue the. Thank you, Gabe. We'll just continue on with that. So nobody's opposed. Okay. Okay, nope. All right. On the report, Paul. So I don't have any um, significant updates, so I'll see the floor. Governing Documents Committee updates, Paul. All right, so Re and I got together today, um, continue our work on the Governing Documents Committee, um, and now we're pursuing our work on the membership handbook. Uh, we've discussed internally, we want to rename the committee to the membership handbook committee so that instead of being like a forever standing committee, it's a committee with a specific purpose of completing the handbook. And once it's done, we will dissolve the committee. Um, and so that's a that's a change we've agreed on within the committee. And um, right now, actively, we uh, Rhea and I are both taking chunks out of the membership handbook um, and um, adding in the changes that we've made in the work that we've done so far this year, as well as um, you know, taking out the parts that aren't uh, accurate anymore. Like if it's talking about us getting paid like way more than we're being paid now, I, it's uh, we're correcting that to reflect what's actually going on. So if you're a member of the governing documents committee, or if you'd like to help with our effort, um, see me and I can get you like two pages of the handbook. And it would be lovely if we get some folks to help us kind of whittle down this book. It's a 20 page document, so it's a lot for any one person. Um, and if we work on this collaboratively, we can come up with um, a product that we can we can all agree on getting through this body. So um, we meet, we'll be meeting again next Friday at 12. Um, wait, actually, um, that's conditional whenever not we meet for, for Thanksgiving. So, um, you know, hold that thought. We might not be meeting, but, um, you know, we'll be working asynchronously to make those changes and stuff like that. And if you have any concerns about the membership handbook, even if you don't want to play a role in this process, I, I'm happy to hear your concerns and uh, incorporate them into our work on the documents. So that's everything. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Cab, Mike, then Stephanie, or vice versa. Sure, I can go. You all can hear me, right? Yep. Yes. Um, so a few things, say Cab wise. Um, I am also, I can also report that we have approved our governing documents, uh, the bylaws for SACO to be sent at the SDAs. I've been very lazy in the hour since our SACO meeting, so I'll send this up for the end of the day. We've successfully whittled down our bylaws from 12 ish pages to four, so I'm very proud of that. Um, secondly, Cynthia, um, I have Holy, she, um, and she's the director of the library, she came in today, gave us some information. Um, about small safe spaces on um, how reacting being the library is kind of on her list of things to do. Um, kind of a bunch of kind of things, um, but it was kind of a quick kind of meeting today. So um, we talked about kind of goals, all that sort of stuff. So if I'm missing anything, anything Stephanie, go ahead. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Yeah. Um, I did want to just let everyone know that the next board of directors meeting is going to be the 14th. So if anyone had any <clears throat> anything that you wanted me to bring up um, or to address during the meeting, um, please let me know. Um, and I also just want to invite everyone to our SACAB meetings. Um, they're right before these ones from 11 to 12. We do have a lot of great speakers. I don't know who it is we're going to be having next. I think Mike would, but um, if you guys want to come in, listen to what we're talking about, that way you guys are that that much more informed, please come in. 
I could speak on that next. Um, the next big person will be coming into SACAP is Colleen Walker. She is the CEO, current CEO of AHEC. Um, I plan to have her within the first three meetings, one of those meetings um, of our spring semester. So she will come in. Thank you. Okay, Board of Trustee update. Okay, hello. So my update, it, okay, so when we had our board retreat back, you know, a couple weeks ago, um, like I let you all know, the board released a statement um, along with President Davidson um, in support of DACA and against the fifth uh, circuit court's decision. And so now with that, um, the faculty Senate also released a resolution, again, also supporting um, undocumented DACA immigrant students um, and also co condemning the decisions of the fifth court. And yeah, and so with that being said, there's also during that meeting, during that uh, retreat, we talked about a potential DACA teaching to let people know like what's going on, what's like the history, all that fun stuff. And, and there's like an official date now on that DACA teaching, which is November 29th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And it will cover things like history and immigration, law and immigration policy, economics and immigration, and education and, and immigration. Um, and so if any of you want to go, just let me know. I'll forward you all uh, the invite after this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Gabe. Chad, Public Relations Committee. All right, PR Committee met on Thursday. Uh, a couple of items that we went over. Uh, the website has not been published yet. Please, please, please send me your photos for the website. I have about half of the photos that I need. Send them to me. Um, <clears throat> everything else is uh, pretty internal uh, for events. The Food for Finals event is still in development. Uh, we're finalizing the details. Um, and then this event is an event that is put on by SGTSAC. It's going to be one of our, our big events for the semester. Uh, we'll be putting out a sign-up sheet shortly, and every member of TSAC is encouraged to show their face at this event. This is our event to host, our event to staff as well. <coughs> Sorry. Um, as far as the flagging event update, uh, the event was tabled for next week. I failed to realize that that is going to be a um, Thanksgiving break, so nobody is going to be on campus. Um, and then of the members that attended the PR meeting, it was a unanimous, unanimous decision in that committee to scrap the event entirely. The event has already spent $50 of SGT SAC's money without the approval of the council and would spend have to spend another $50 for a week long rental through AHEC. Uh, the PR committee has decided the responsibility of the event will not fall on it and will uh, be left to the writers of the resolution to to uh, put on the event should they want to. That's all I have for PR. Thank you, PR committee. See this. DSGC representatives um, updates. So Michael let you speak on the second meeting, but the first meeting was canceled by the chair, so that did not happen this month. I would assume that's going to happen again on in January. Mike. Yeah, so the chairs weren't even at the second events. They so they came up. Um, so I. I mean, there, there was nothing there, so I quick I just kind of left. So um, if the leaders of the CSGC aren't going to bring us together, then I don't, I don't, I don't find it a fair use of our time. So that's how it was. Go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to <clears throat> echo some of the um, frustration. I was sitting in the Slack that I was encouraging everyone to join, and to be honest with you, it's dead, 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 dead. There's not a whole lot going on in there. Um, which you know, there's there's two two aspects to that. One is it's like, you know, um, I think. We could do more to maybe um, like and I could do more as, as the person that's on there to share what we're doing um, as to help, like, you know, encourage other campuses to do a lot of the same stuff like with DACA, um, like w with our events around awareness and food insecurity. And um, and so, yeah, I'm going to try to do that, but I'll also mention to everyone who I've suggested join the Slack. There's not much going on there, so unless you want to be the spark to get it going, um, you know, just take that into consideration. Thank you. Policy Advisory Committee. Re, you have us an update. I do. Um, at the end of this month, on the 30th, 
finally the university closure policy is going to go before the university policy committee with the president so it would have helped you know there was a lot of confusion this week about whether so by the 30th you know hopefully that'll be approved and it'll be in place and then we will know for certain whether remote synchronous classes or on-campus classes everybody's going to follow the same schedule for weather for this winter that's it thank you TSAC budget committee mike I have no updates. Thank you. Faculty Student Affairs Committee, Naomi. And then Re or vice versa. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Um, so I did not go this morning, so I'm gonna pass it on to Re. Uh yeah. Thank you. Re. Okay. We um Emily Reagan presented to us about um the online educational resources questionnaire they put forward that um, Paul and I talked about this and about being of help to her. Um, but uh, as far as a new questionnaire coming up and helping that group get information out to students. So um, Paul's going to help me with that. We are also we were talking about um, this. This issue that Will is taking, I think, to every organization on campus about that community common community hour type thing. And so we had a good discussion about that. Will is going to come back and present it to us. We talked about it even without him. And so of these instructors that are part of this committee had a lot to say about why they don't like the idea of pausing classes in the middle of the day for something like this. But um, I'm sure we'll have a lot of discussion further down the line as TSAC too that add to the noise about it. <laughs> That's really it. Thank you, Re. Gabe. Awesome. And on like that quick, like real quick note, um, there's a survey that I will copy and paste into the chat, um, which is from uh, Dr. Simpkins' office about this community hour to get like student feedback on it and what like thoughts and et cetera. Um, so yeah, I'll put it in the chat. Thank you, Gabe. Sustainability Committee. Taylor. I don't have any update, but if Alex has anything. Alex. I have no updates. All right, thank you guys. COVID response committee, Alan. I uh, did attend the last meeting and I um, actually, I think, uh, I don't know how many meetings ago, Taylor made a suggestion that we change the name to the uh, health response committee since there's a lot of different health things, but that didn't go over so well. Um, basically, I think they want that stepping on the toes of the health center. So I think the name's going to stay the same, but there's no more updates on as far as COVID or uh, monkeypox or any of that stuff goes. Thank you, Alan. Free Student Travel Committee. Earlier this week, one second year master's um, research student in the Department of Nutrition presented um, about attending a Hawaiian International Conference on Education for Nutrition in January and. I think we've given her every cent we can for that, and she's going to be seeking other funding elsewhere. Thank you, Ree. Good work. Uh, Indigenous Student Resource Committee, Naomi, you have the floor. All right. Um, yeah, not a lot going on right now because of the semester, but I'm hoping after break I'll be able to get a few more things going. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Council updates, goals, goal updates. Is it? What, uh, so, Paul. Thank you. <clears throat> I just wanted to reiterate the student call for action on CG Sub because there's still like a lacking space for students to store their stuff. We know that the chess club, you know, thanks to me, is storing the, their stuff in our office. But that same opportunity isn't necessarily afforded to other student orgs. So they need a space where they can store stuff, where they can meet. Um, we have spaces where students can meet, but we still don't have a space where they can store stuff. So um, I'll admit, I think, you know, even when I went to the president's cabinet meeting yesterday, I neglected to mention CIGI sub again, right? And it went unmentioned the whole meeting. And I, you know, kind of I beat myself up for it afterwards. I'm like, gosh, I should have brought it up again. Um, and so this is a self-criticism and a, like to say that we should center that again or at least put it on one of the one of the main burners because i think we really could do something about it like 
Um, there's, uh, someone was telling me about an open office space downstairs uh, below where the iPi is that is currently empty. I don't know how accurate that is. I'll have to do some investigation, but I have no doubt that, you know, the institution or AHEC could help um, replace what was lost when Cities Hub was, you know, converted into office space. So that's all I got. Thank you. Any up, oh, Re? Um, just wanted to report that Gabe and I have um, sent an email to Yvonne Smith, who's kind of in charge of scholarships, asking for them to consider the way they present scholarships, the way students can search for things, and the way you know some scholarships are missed in how the information is sent out to students because they might have you know, maybe they're first generation, even though they're a um, sophomore and they've missed out on a scholarship that way because there are a number of filters that need to be thought about. So we're hoping, particularly with Dreamers and DACA students um, and all students, that there's a friendlier way for people to apply and, and understand and make known new scholarships or existing scholarships that aren't taken advantage of. And the new scholarship application will be open December 1st, and hopefully we can, I know the university will be telling all the students about it, but maybe we can blow the horn on that too. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Yeah, the scholarship application opens up uh, December 1st. The priority, be, you, they don't make their decision till May 1st, so you have until then to um, fill that out. Uh, Alan. I wanted to let everybody know that I really think that um, you, Dan, and uh, Chad did a great job. Everybody that was in the council at the earlier meeting with Dr. Simpkins, I think we were very well represented. Your presentation was great. And uh, I just thought that was one of the best meetings I've seen here this year. So good job. Thank you, Chad. Thanks, Alan. Gabe. Awesome. Hi, everybody. It's me again. You know, so um, within council goals and stuff, um, I like started to realize that, yes, we have goals, right? You know, wonderful. But we have nothing on like how we're going to get to those goals. You know, we have no plan, no action steps, nothing on how we're going to reach those goals. So I don't know if that's something either the governing documents committee can take over because it's, you know, like a founding document that could help us, you know, what we're going to do for the rest of the year or if a whole new committee should be created for this. Um, because, yeah, that's like what I kind of realized, you know, like we have these five big goals and yes, everybody can bring their own initiatives and all of that, but these are the goals that unify us as a council. And so like thinking of like, what steps are we going to take? You know, like we have these goals, but are we acting upon all of them? Um, and are we ac acting upon all of them to the extent that we can as a council instead of just one person trying to do something? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, Gabe. Uh, I like that uh, bringing it together, the community coming together, the goals rather than a siloed individuals. Chad. Yeah, uh, totally agree. Um, if uh, I don't know that the governing documents committee would be willing to. Ha ha ha. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I this is something that I'm pretty familiar with as far as like stuff that I've learned in my uh, academics, so uh, I could definitely help with uh, how we how we achieve our goals, because there, there is a model that we can follow. Um, and I think it'd be very beneficial for what you're talking about. Thank you. Paul. I just wanted to um, like Chad agree with the call for action, you know, like how do we how do we bring all these great ideas down to the to the to the ground where it can be concrete and laid out into action. So um, I do, however, want to push back a little bit on the committee notion. I fear we already have a, a couple of committees that don't meet regularly. Um, and I am skeptical of that being the approach, though I do share your um, your like insistence that we like, you know, let's walk the walk, you know, not just talk to talk. Um, and I, I just, you know, I guess um, I'm going to and I encourage everyone else to like think creatively on how we can, how, how, how is it that we do that in a way that everyone's working together? Oh, thank you. But yeah, um, that's it. I, good point though. Thanks everybody. Anybody, any other further updates? Okay, hearing none. Advisor updates. Armando, then Dr. Brown. 
Good afternoon, everybody. Hope everyone's having a good week. Um, Reed, just to answer your question, it's actually one of my points. Um, please mark down on y'all's calendars January 13th or January 20th. Hold those. Uh, let me know if there's any issues with those dates, first of all. But uh, those are what we're looking for our spring retreat. This retreat will be very much a more working session, more than kind of uh, lessons like we did last time, just so we can, you know, hunker down and figure out what we got to do for um, the spring and for the remainder of y'all's term. Um, next, I am finalizing the survey to be posted, distributed, whatever you want, word you want to use during Food for Finals to gather some real data. If anyone has any good points of like, hmm, I wonder what the students think about this, please send them my way. Um, I will send a draft of the survey probably by mid next week. Um, just because I will say today, but I'll forget. Um, and then I am recruiting two to three of y'all, two to three members. I want to look at ways to help enact accountability structure, not in terms of behavior, but in terms of accountability and the work that y'all are doing here within student government. And since this is a kind of a flattened structure where everyone shares power, I want y'all's voice to see what's fair, what's just in, in the way of enacting this. Um, so I've had some, some a, a handful of complaints of some counselors just cashing in checks rather than utilizing their leadership to gather their student voice. And we don't want that. You know what I mean? Y'all are elected student officials for a reason. So we want to make sure we are doing the power that you are elected to done, elected to do. So if two to three of y'all are interested in figuring out a way to, you know, plan some accountability, whether it's a structure, please let me know. That is all. Dr. Brown, you have the floor. Thank you, Armando. Go ahead, Dr. Brown. Hi. Um... Here I am. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, the only update that I have is uh, related to the grand opening of Rowdy's Corner, which will take place um, on November 29th. We're doing a grand opening in the evening um, for donors and community members um, and in the space from 5 to 6.30 p.m. I don't know if TSAC received an invitation. I got one because I, I donate. Um, but then in addition to that, um, on Wednesday, so that's a Tuesday, and that's in line with the Roadrunner Day of Giving. So we're hoping that that will increase additional donations to the food pantry. We imagine in that visible location that we're going to get probably a lot more, um, a lot more engagement from students, which is awesome and what we wanted. But um, we're just wanting to get as much financial support as possible to sustain the model. Um, so know that that's November 29th and then on November 30th, the food pantry slash Rowdy's Corner um, will open and be accessible to students. And so I just wanted to share that. I don't know how, well, I know we are advertising that through the runner and in and, and other ways and through um, the current structure right now with the Roadrunner Food Pantry, but just wanted to make sure you all are aware of that. And I hope that some of you are able to attend, whether it's Tuesday night or Wednesday, um, just dropping in and, and just um, seeing what what is what it's going to look like now. We're really excited about all of the work that's been um, put into it and all of the support from our community. So I encourage you all to stop by. Um, so there's that. Um, and then the other thing is just what was the other thing oh armando already talked about um, a planning retreat i guess just in terms of some of the points that you all are making about goals and operationalizing those goals it's also going to be an opportunity for us to check in and see your progress and and your accomplishments and celebrate those and then also think about you know where do y'all want to go next and do we need to redefine some of those goals um, and think about additional goals moving forward for the spring. So I really like the idea of setting up a structure. Um, I forgot, I think it was Chad who talked about he has he has some ideas for that, but we are definitely going to do deeper work in that space um, in January as well. And I think that's it. I think that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Armando. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Uh, Mike, you have a question? I do. Armando, I'm just taking you up on your offer you mentioned earlier. Um, that's something I would, wouldn't mind looking at with you as well. So, Was that the accountability thing, Mike? Yes. Thank okay. you. All right. Um, 
also, I'm going to go back up to the co-chair update. Sorry. Um, there is Dr. Will Simpkins is looking for a member of TSAC to join him in talking to the higher ups of, of the school about a, the Indigenous People's Day holiday um, and being able to work on that. And so I know a lot of us are busy. I would encourage some of those of us who are not as active to um, speak with some of the people that have insight here on the council and, and take me up on that offer. And I can, if you let me know or put in the chat or Paul know that you're interested in that, then I can CC you on an email with Will Simpkins and get you in line with that. So keep that in mind as they go to, um, since that is one of our resolutions and our, us pushing the university to do that. So this is the next step in that. So, yep, thank you. And now on to old business. CR 22 accessibility resolution. Paul, you have the floor. I uh, I know we were all here last week when I read it, so I'm going to you know, throw the question out here. Do we want to reread it or do we want to just get to discussion? I like I talked to Dan about not wanting this discussion to like take over the meeting. And so we, you know, we're like, hey, how about we set a limit on discussion so that we like so this doesn't take over the whole meeting. <laughs> um, and I just I wanted to throw that out there before like making a motion to see if that's something that people like people uh, Jack with like like me not reading this is any in the opposition to not reading this and moving to like 10 minutes of discussion and then calling the question. And if discussion's less than that, we'll cut it short and go to question. Any thoughts? None. OK, hearing none, um, we'll just move into discussion on it then. So uh, we'll open the floor to the opposition. So if you have anything to say, now's your time. Feel free to raise your hand and we can recognize you. All right, James, feel free to take the floor. So last week I said that I was against action with this resolution because I believe that asking the university to lower the, or reduce the cost of tuition with no alternative source of revenue is not realistic. Programs at this university thrive off tuition to offer students various benefits and opportunities that many students need. On top of that, at today's Student Affairs Board with Dr. Simpkins, many students were asking for more stuff, more resources, more things from the university. And so obviously reducing tuition would not allow them to you know, make those adjustments for students. You know, the university wants to open up housing and a dining hall for students um, to you know, get more revenue and possibly lower tuition, but that's not happening now. And it's probably not happening for at least a couple of years. So we need to be realistic in how we go about this. I have been in contact with George Middlemist, Vice President of Administration and Finance and Chief Financial Officer. He has offered to come with, to discuss with TSAC on the university's finances. On top of that, I've also been in contact with Casey Gerhardt, Director of Government Affairs. Uh, she has also voiced support to help TSAC stimulate Colorado's government to help make college tuition more affordable for students across the state rather than just here at MSU. I would ask that we amend the current resolution to remove action one so we can get the available information we need to make a responsible and realistic decision on this matter. Thank you, James. Um, now, can I ask, was it a motion? You're making there, or are you asking yeah, me to like be, friendly, yeah, friendly, friendly amendment? amendment to remove it while we get you know these sources down? Is that a friendly amendment? I, no, sorry, but you know, um, if we want to, we can hear out the amendment here, uh, put it to a vote. So, uh, do we have a second on the amendment? I'll second. I'll second. All right, we hear a second. Now, um, we can open it up for a short discussion. Chad, do you have your hand up? Yeah, um, go ahead. Where can I get access to this? Because oh. right now I don't have view of the entire document. Here, let me let me get you a link here in the chat while we're talking. Thank you. No problem. Thank you for the good point of order. Um, but moving into discussion, is there anybody opposed to this amendment? Um, the floor will go first to opposition. If there's no one else, I'll speak on my opposition to this. All right. So given some time, um, I'll go ahead and just take the floor for a quick quick statement on why I don't think we should make that change to action one. Um, when we're told that the university doesn't have um, the funds or like this kind of request to lower tuition is unrealistic, I um, I, I, I hear that with a great degree of skepticism. You know, a, a, a journalist from Colorado, uh, or from Boulder, University of Colorado Boulder, uncovered that our, our university participates in a uh, conservative a lobbying group here in the state capitol to the tune of $10,000 a year, right? Where they lobby for tax cuts for property, which reduce 
reduces funding for education, right? The same kind of funding sources that our institution probably depends on, um, as well as lobbying for uh, camping vans to take our unhoused uh, neighbors here in the city and push them around like they're not human beings. And so I think that if the university can spend $10,000 on that, and this is a fact, I know that they could at least put that into reducing tuition. I don't care if it was a, re a reduction in, um, I mean, I do care about it being a, a significant reduction because of how how much tuition weighs on our students. Um, but uh, I just know that there really could be a reassessment of how money is spent in this institution and how it is often wasted. Um, and I think that when our school has that slogan, reimagine what's possible, I say, let's take that to the budget. <laughs> you know, let's reimagine what's possible with the budget. And as um, you know, I, I've had friends say, it's, you know, chopped from the top, right? What's the biggest budget item um, in the school? It's like fundamentally reassess. I'd be happy to talk to George Middlemist about this, but um, I'm going to meet him with the same degree of skepticism if he tells me this is an unreasonable ask, because I think truly what's been unreasonable is how tuition has gone up and up and up and up and up and up. And we've all been here for it. We're here now, right? And thank goodness there's a freeze, right? Um, but what happens next year? You know, is it keep going up? It, like at what point um, do we call that unreasonable and un, uh, untenable? You know, because uh, we're seeing like, like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's that's all I'll say on that. But um, we can, unless there's any other discussion, people speaking for this particular amendment, you know, we can move into the uh, affirmative. Anybody want to speak on that, James? Yeah, I would have to disagree, disagree just because you're utilizing a journalist. And I've read that article too, and their source, well, they didn't really give a source. It was pretty much a just trust me, bro. Um, and I'm talking about bringing in the chief financial officer of MSU Denver who can give us the facts of how the university spends the money. So I would, you know, encourage you to ask if this is a realistic thing that is happening. And he would be the one to answer it, not a journalist. Um, and on top of that, you know, we do have to be realistic. You know, the school has been reducing in the amount of students that are enrolling. You know, I just read a thing that in 2020, we had roughly 18,000, 19,000 students, and now we're down to 16,000. Like we're losing enrollment and that is causing an issue for our budget because they've have to make sacrifices. They have to make decisions. Part of that is, you know, increasing pay for teachers to ensure that, you know, they're compensated to stay here. And if we ask them to reduce their tuition with no available other funds, they will probably have to reduce the amount that a professor or a faculty member is paid. And it will also inhibit student government's ability, the C2 Hub's ability, the Roadrunner Food Pantry. We have asked them to match our donations. We've asked them to fund Roadrunner Food Pantry, but then we're asking them to also reduce tuition. You, you reduce tuition, they're going to be like, okay, well, we can't you know, give that much money to Roadrunner Food Pantry. I'd rather fund all these available programs so that students can get the resources they need rather than just reducing tuition with no alternatives. Quick quick reminder the, to address the chair, everybody, so when, when, when um, making comments. And also, uh, do you have a quick a yeah, response to that? I'm not going to cut you off. Well, this will be very small. It's just a point of uh, like a point of clarification on the on the sourcing of the article. They used a Colorado Open Records Request Act uh, request. So this was information provided by the state. They asked Davidson for a response on it, and she spoke to why that she's in it. So I would encourage a revisiting of the article. But Chad, Chad, I would like to pause discussion until we have access to this document in the chat. Because again, oh. I I do not know what I'm looking for. I'm not looking at anything in particular. Here you go. Should be accessible in the chat now. Alex. I have a point of clarification. This is simply a letter to the university. This isn't actually going to change anything. That will be up to the university themselves, correct? That is correct. Naomi. So uh, this is just me speaking out. Uh, I think that, or I guess I'm, I kind of want to make a motion here. Um, I know there's a motion on the table and I don't know how the stacked order kind of goes, but I think that we should table this, make a motion to table this discussion and table the resolution being voted on until both sides 
of the discussion can really research and see what they agree on, whether it's the side that like they agree that if we can spend $10,000 on, you know, lobbying, um, you know, in the capital, then obviously we can afford to reduce tuition. Um, but and or, you know, on James side as well, maybe research to see if like we like those sources or if we really see like the financial side of it. I think that this matter requires more research and it would be unfair if we sat here and forced us to make a decision based off of stuff we don't know about. So um, I think that both parties that are in this need to do a little bit more research to present the data to us and then we can make a decision on the resolution based off the research that is presented. I'll second that. You know, I believe, I'll be honest with you, um, I believe the motion to be uh, dilatory and kind of to say what that means, because I know we're all new to Robert's rules, is to say that, um, you know, it doesn't contain a rational proposition, right? We need to, like, clarify what it is we want to do with this motion, because right now we're discussing an amendment to an existing motion. And so it's not that I want to shut you down, Naomi, and what you want to do, but can we clarify that in some way that it's in order we can move on it? Because it's just... I'm, I can't be the only one a little confused. Or is she tabling the amendment? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. 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 So I am making a motion to table the amendment, or to. So I guess it'd be two motions then. So be a motion to table the amendment and the motion to table the vote on the resolution. So I guess two, and I don't know how that works. Um, so that way, so I guess, or I guess a motion to both to both table the amendment and table the voting on the resolution. So that way we have time to research and decide on both sides of the argument. I'll second that, the tabling motion. Is anybody opposed? I, I am opposed. I am as well. Um, this was tabled last week, and I think um, now is a good time to, to vote on it. Um, as I, you know, since considering it is just a letter and it's just a call to action and, and uh, to the university. So I, I'm opposed to tabling it myself. Um, I'll speak specifically to being opposed to the tabling because of, um, like, again, we did it last week, like Diane was saying, we've had a week to continue thinking on it. Like, what is it we want to, like, if there are problems that we want to change about it, what would we change? Um, and I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, if we if we have discussion or disagreement about it, let's have it. Let's have it here and now and, you know, finish this business because it's not going to like I don't I don't think that will change if we postpone it because that's what we did last week. And so I think we and for a letter, you know, I, I think we can, you know, disagree like we can hash out a struggle on it, figure out which way this council stands on it and move on to the next thing um, is my two cents. But we can continue discussion on the tabling of this amendment and the resolution. Alex. Alex. Naomi. Sorry. Um, yeah. Um, I, oh, Alex. Oh, no, is go ahead, Alex. Okay. From the tabling. Say that again. We couldn't hear you, Alex. You're muted. Are we are we voting on tabling this? Oh, my hands. Yeah, not yet. That far yet. We're, just, we're discussing it. I didn't have a question. My hand is still just left up. All right, Naomi. Yeah, um, I would just like to say I do. OK, so since we're not going to table it, um, I do agree then with Paul that, um, you, you know, this has been in the chat for a while and I apologize for that. I forget that we did table this last um, last meeting, so I retract I retract that for tabling it. Um, I think that we could have done our own research in that time since we already had problems with it in the past. We could have taken the time this ourselves to read that and then research ourselves. So I apologize. Yeah. Um, I completely forgot about that. But I do agree with Paul. I think that there is um, like I've, I've been to a few of the meetings where they talk about like budgets and stuff. And I know Gabe's been to a few, too. And there is money within the university because like, like out of nowhere, you ask them for random things. And all of a sudden they come up with like one, two, three thousand dollars just on hand on site to get to us. So I think that it's a matter of maybe coming to terms with like maybe a certain percentage and like asking them to decrease it over time and looking at what's realistic. Um, you know, so maybe like compromising with James is asking is like, I see you have to see the realistic side. I can't just up and drop tuition rates. Like I get that. Um, I know that they did offer the locked in portion, but I agree yeah. overall with um, Paul that we do need to hold them accountable and they do need to either, um, 
you know, lock in a rate for a specific amount of years, or they need to just straight up lower tuition costs because then that's going to affect everybody else. So, yes. Thank you, Naomi. Um, so w the motion has been withdrawn um, as the author. You can do that. So um, I see a hand with Chad. Know that we're, you know, since the tabling motion was withdrawn, we're back in discussion on the amendment that James had proposed str uh, striking item one or having it. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, James. Is it like striking it or is it adding the until there's more research? I mean, whatever you will do to actually compromise on this, because I'm simply just saying we should get more facts from both the university and other sources before just just asking. a direct question to so folks understand what we're voting on. We're I'm talking, talking right now. Thank you. No, um, I'm talk, talk to the chair. It was sorry. I'm telling you it's you know, I would prefer it. We just not do this until we have the available facts, so I'll strike it from the whole uh, uh, resolution. OK, I appreciate that clarification. All right, go ahead, Chad, and then we'll have Mike. All right, um, I I personally believe that if we ask for something like this without doing our proper research prior, then we are diluting diluting our positional authority and positional power within the university by by continuing to ask for things that are uh, undeliverable, in my opinion. Um, and I do agree with James that that we should have if these people that that operate the budget within MSU Denver are willing to come and speak with us, which it sounds like they are, we should have them come in and talk with us so that way we can figure out what exactly the issue is and how we can circumvent the problem. Just as Dr. Uh, Dr. Simpkins had told us about um, parking on this university, how we need to know exactly how the parking situation works before we can propose new options. We need to do the same in this situation. Mike. Hello, you all can hear me, right? Yes. Perfect. Um, I'll direct this towards you, Dan, as you're the chair. So Thank you. Um, I'm kind of I'm kind of in a weird place here because I I 100 percent agree that there is a fair. It's a fair request to ask. You know, let's talk to the CFO of the university. Let's get some numbers out of him. It's also it's kind of weird to hear that uh when you're describing this article that there i was told you know what there wasn't a source and there was clearly an open meeting request act so that's a little weird here as well so i'm kind of just put my two cents on it i think i mean we should definitely question the ceo at some point whether we pass this or not that should be on our agenda um yeah that's just kind of where i'm at now so thank you mike uh taylor So I just have a question. I'm wondering if you can answer it, Paul, about um, action four. Um, I know AHEC does like a ticketing system. If something's broken, like you send them a ticket and they can go fix it. But I'm not sure if MSU is involved in the same loop with them on that. Do you know? Yeah, so I can I can speak to that as like, uh, you know, having worked at the university and submitted some of those tickets to AHEC, uh, they can do that. Um, <clears throat> I think the approach for this particular um, like realm of maintenance should be much more proactive instead of like reactive, like waiting for tickets. They should be going out and making sure that this stuff works, making sure that it's like in good shape instead of like waiting for someone to say, oh, this thing was broken. Because by that point, it's it's caused a, you know, a hurdle for someone. But I really do appreciate the question. They do have that. Thank you, Taylor. Uh, uh, Alex. I would like to address the question of further research. If this is an open source from the state, I do not see the use in more research, considering the fact that this is only a letter. Thank you, Alex. Naomi. Uh, just to kind of piggyback off of what Taylor was saying, like um, there, you, they, I are not Taylor. Taylor to um, Paul and then Paul's response. Um, I have known at other companies that I've worked for that they have like a weekly testing and I'm sure you guys have all been to King Supers or Sprouts and they'd be like, you know, it's time for your, you know, um, your temperature checks or whatever. Like we need to have one of those at least once a week, um, you know, just to make sure everything happens. And it's not hard. You literally just have to find a couple AHEC people. You give them a list of all the like accessibility areas where you need to get in with a wheelchair and they test it and then they ding if it works and if it doesn't, then it doesn't. But uh, I mean, I've seen plenty of AHEC people just kind of chilling and talking for a minute and I get everyone needs a break. I'm not trying to say that like we need to exploit our workers. I'm just saying like, just take a quick stroll around campus and test everything. I don't think it would be very hard for them to do that. So 
um, maybe that's something that they could come up with as a solution. Thank, thank you, Naomi. Alex, is that a, a new hand? No, it's not. Okay. So is there any, oh, oh Taylor. Um, thank you. Um, looking at these action items too, I'm just left with a feeling that they should be individual resolutions. You know, like there's so much um, great things on here, but I think, mm, I don't know. I think everyone just has their own perspective and may not agree to all of them, but I think individually they would be more successful. Thank you, Taylor. Gabe? I also agree with Taylor. I think that um, this resolution, although I see like all the greatness behind it, I definitely think that this would be something that's like separated within resolutions because it is a lot, like there are a lot of different points made in this resolution um, that I feel are also great. And so if we're just being stuck on like one part, then thinking of maybe just like splitting this up then, you know, because, you know, we've been debating about this since last week. Um, we're still debating. Nothing has changed, y'all. Like, let's be honest, nothing has changed. So, yeah. Well, I'm one week older, aren't we all, you know? Uh, but besides that, I uh, I like the, like, you and Taylor raise a good point here. Like, it seems as though action one, two, three, four, and five are like disconnected and talking about different things. But my thought process on like authoring this was questioning like, what does it mean to have an accessible university? When our university talks about their cadre values, you know, um, and we talk about accessibility, like what does that mean? Um, and so I try to take as holistic an approach as I could possibly uh, take. And again, in writing like a letter, just elevating like the student voice for this because students I talk to are talking about this stuff. Like this didn't just come out of my head, you know, I wish, <laughs> but. Um, and it all it, it's all interrelated in problems with accessibility. And so um, I'd be, you know, it's not like, you know, if this was all voted down today or something that I wouldn't, you know, revisit that with you too and say, hey, OK, let's break it up. But I really do think there's value in like recognizing the multifaceted problem that is promoting accessibility in a university and addressing like gaps in it. Because if you're, if, you know, if you're looking at accessibility and you're not talking about, you know, handicap accessibility, if you're not talking about, you know, black student enrollment, you know, if you're not talking about student debt, what kind of accessibility are you talking about for a very minute few? Um, but yeah, I don't know. I seem as interrelated. Um, I see some hands. Going with progressive stack, I think we'll go Gabe and then back to Chad. Here we go. Awesome. Oh, Mike. Awesome. So yes, I definitely see where you're coming from with the holistic approach. And accessibility can look like the way that accessibility shows up for these identities and demographics that you're talking about can be very differently, can be different, you know, in, in what ways accessibility what accessibility things that they need. Um, and so that's why I think, you know, if we split it up, it would make more sense because each um, identity and yeah, has like their own needs, their own things. And so definitely um, looking into it as yes, holistic and still recognizing that they have different needs. Thank you, Gabe. Go ahead, Chad, and then we'll recognize Dan. Um, I would like to call the question on striking action one, the amendment to strike action one. Do we have a second? I second that. All right. The motion on the floor is to strike action one, uh, calling to question closing discussion. Um, so uh, we'll go ahead and do a roll call here. Uh, Alan? I vote to strike, yes. Alex? I do not vote to strike. Chad. Yes. Dan. No. Gabe. Abstain. James. Yes. Uh, Mike. No. Naomi. Oh, thank you. Uh, Bree. 
I abstain. Stephanie. Abstain. Uh, Taylor. Abstain, thank you. Hey, no worries. And finally, myself, and I'll vote yay. Oh, sorry, not yay, my bad. Correction, let the record reflect, nay. I got confused, sorry. All right, so we'll tally those up real quick. All right, so the the motion fails, um, and so we'll we'll move back to discussion because uh, when there's a tie, it doesn't pass. So we'll move back to discussion on the resolution at hand. Um, I welcome a call to question. Naomi says no. Well, it doesn't matter now. What do you? Oh, okay, Naomi, I'm just gonna let that go. Um, oh, because very yeah, she meant to vote no. Is what she's saying. She voted yes. She's meant to vote no. Oh, still. At any rate, Naomi, your vote is protected. So um, we'll move back to discussion on this. I think we kind of beat the dead horse a little bit. And so I welcome a calling to question unless Dan, did you want to get that two cents out that you had there? Well, I was just going to say, I don't think it would hurt to vote on this as it is and then separately create resolutions that pull these different action steps out as like a multi-layered type of approach to that. So um, that was just my two cents. I think I do see that they should be separated, but I don't think that voting on them as one package would hurt that separating them later on in different resolutions. And I uh, just in response to that, like that to me seems like an excellent compromise between the position that we should have, you know, more resolutions that address these things. And when Alex talks about this being like a letter, like advocating and raising a voice, um, our resolutions that we could split this up into could be more material, like could like get to the nitty gritty of like, what are we doing to advance this? Um, like what kind of work are we doing? So, um, you know, it doesn't end with this, but I'll call the question uh, and say that motion we end discussion on this. Do we have a second? Second, second that. All right. I second. Cool. Motion on the floor is to call the question. Um, is anyone opposed to ending discussion here? All right. Oh, chat. All right. Uh, we have one opposition to, uh, and so the the eyes have it. We'll we'll close discussion. Um, and we'll call the question. So on the resolution at hand, uh, the MSU Denver SGT SAC wants to make our university more accessible. Um, we'll be voting on that unamended. So uh, Alan. Abstain. Alex. Aye. Chad. No. Dan. Yes. Gabe? Abstain. James? No. Oh, sure. So point of clarification for Stephanie, we are voting on the resolution uh, as it is, as it is not amended. If you scroll up in the chat a little bit, you can see the copy I, I, I pasted in there a little late to Chad's request, but uh, it's there and um, yeah. So does that clarify things? You good, Stephanie? OK, cool. All right. Now, um, never never too early call for clarification. All right, Mike. I abstain. All right. Gotcha, Alan. We will change that to no. All right, Naomi. All right, um, Re. Yes. Stephanie. Okay. Abstain. And Taylor. Abstain. Thank you. All right. And one more call for Naomi. Uh, your vote on the resolution. Yes. Okay. And my own vote. Yes. The ayes have it. Oh. Yep. The ayes have it. The motion passes. Thank you, Council. All right. All righty. On to new business. James, you're going to have the floor here in a second after I announce it. Address suspension of constitutional rules. James. Uh, before I start, Paul, is there anything you'd like to say or no? Sure. Uh, 
I uh, appreciate you giving me a moment to say something about it. Um, I after our um, our discussion of suspending the rules last Friday, I was like, you know what, I need to revisit the rule that we're talking about suspending. That way, I understand, um, you know, that everything's in order. And the rule specifically says, council members who wish to introduce bills, announcements, or other forms of work must notify the chair chairs, if applicable, the ex the executive in uh, assistant at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Both of those things happened. I, I, I think that the previous resolution was in order. Uh, the call to suspend it um, was unnecessary. The, the call to suspend the rules was unnecessary. But even even then, um, the Roberts Rules of Order allows for the suspension of uh, a standing rule, which is a, a term used uh, in a special sense that may include parliamentary rules adopted by the convention. Um, and among other things, I don't. I, I think specifically Robert's rules also speaks to using suspending the rules when the rules impede the work of the council. And I, I would argue that there's a good case to say that, you know, our ability to look at a resolution that was sent in 48 hours prior uh, was impeded by this rule, and it was well within our, you know, well within the order to vote. And it would have been a vote too. Like if people didn't want to suspend it, they could vote no, or we could discuss that. But that's all I have to say on that. So as you know, as Paul just said last week, he asked to vote to suspend a clause from the Constitution. Um, after doing a extensive research, and when I say extensive, I mean a simple Google search on multiple websites, I have found that Robert's Rules of Order recognizes that local constitution and bylaws defines the organization's basic structure and fundamental rules, normally requires a two-thirds vote, and prior notice for amendment are not subject to suspension. So no, anything from the Constitution cannot be suspended via Robert's Rules. Robert's Rules only affects parliamentary rule of order, not a Constitution or our bylaws. So you can't suspend the handbook. If we still had it, the community document, the Constitution, if it's been voted on by this body as a governing document, it cannot be suspended. Paul, so my understanding, because I was, you know, I appreciate you emailing me about talking about this so that I could like, you know, do my due diligence before coming to the meeting. Um, governing documents can be like rules in the governing documents can be suspended um, from what my research suggests on a two thirds majority. It can't just be a simple majority. And so like you're correct in the sense like what was happening last week, you know, would have been out of order had it been necessary, had it actually carried out. Right. Um, and it's a moment for the whole council, myself included. To learn a little bit more about Robert's rules, to learn a bit more about the suspension of the rules, um, but you know, I think it's honestly behind us now, and like we we can learn from it and move forward. But that's what I have to say, Chad. Um, I also want to point out that the the item that I pointed to as far as why the resolution should not be voted upon was um, section three bills or article two section three bills which states all bills introduced must be available to the council at least 24 hours prior to the meeting to allow members to familiarize themselves with the material not the 48 hour item that you're talking about with the chairs co-chairs and the the administrative assistants and i don't see our constitution as rules i i, I think and i do my own research on this but i think what robert's rules of order is mentioning is the rules within Robert's rules of order can be suspended, not a governing document, because that's what this is. It's a constitution. James. Yeah, I would like to reflect what Chad said. I, I would just like to imagine if. United States Congress decided to use Robert's rules of order and say, you know what, today we're going to suspend. Article one of the Constitution, just do whatever we want. Like that's a slippery slope. That's not how this works. This is specifically only for Robert's rules. And as I always said, I encourage any council member that has an issue with this constitution to write an amendment and bring it forth to the council to be voted on. Like it's that's all I'm asking. And yeah. Thank you, James. Paul. Um, this is the last I'll say on this because I don't want to beat a dead horse. Um, this is the rules of order of a society or of our body here um, as contained in the manual established by the bylaws 
um, as the primary authority or is included in any special rules of order adopted by the organization, a la our constitution. Um, our rules of parliamentary procedure, the suspension of which requires a two thirds vote. I, I think it might be beneficial if we obtain more copies of this because this is an excellent little reference so that we can understand and like not get tripped up over this stuff because I got tripped up last week. Right. And it was only through like you raising that concern. That I read more about it. And now we have a deeper understanding of it. Um, I, I, I question like, you know, we, we're not this, we're not the U.S. Senate or, or how, uh, Congress. Um, we're not making any like outrageous um, power moves with a suspension of a rule that was impeding business of the day. Um, I just think I want to bring it back down to earth when we talk about our metaphors on it, because for a student government, we were passing a letter to call and call for some popular issues. Um, and the We've just found out then that the um, Constitution is also contradictory because in one part in section one, it talks about, you know, what I what I quoted earlier, but in the section you quoted, Chad, it says something different. And so that's something that we'll need to iron out, right? Because if it says two different contradictory things, which rule are we going to say is the rule on this, right? Um, but I know we had some other hands in the stack. Was it you, Gabe? Gabe. Awesome. Hey, y'all. So I just going to, I'm like a little confused here on what the whole goal like end goal of this is like what's the whole end goal yeah. you know are we voting on something is was it just kind of like bring it up and be like okay like you know just like like a little refresher we can't do this because right now it's kind of in the, like from what i'm seeing is that yes we can do it no we can't do it and all that so is this actually productive like is this actually going to take us anywhere because right now all i see and i'm just going to call out from what i see you know using feeling words and everything I just see a bunch, like a lot of feelings going on and everything, you know, and I don't think that's productive of our time, um, of any other counselor's time or of any public, if there's any public here. Um, yeah, that's Thank all I have to say. Thank, Thank you. you, Gabe. James, would you like to s respond to that? Yeah, this was to inform the council that no, you cannot suspend the rules from the Constitution through parliamentary rule of order. You have to propose an amendment to have any effect on the Constitution. That's how the Constitution is written. That's how Robert's rules talks about it. That is all this was for is to inform the council that no, if you have to change anything from the constitution, please write an amendment. Don't ask for a suspension because it's not allowed. And okay. Robert's rules. Uh, Mike, do you have something? And then after you, if it's on this, do you have something regarding this right now that we're talking about? Yes, I do. Actually. Okay, and then I called. Okay, go ahead. So I gave, I completely 100% agree with you. I feel like if this, I feel like we're kind of just going back and forth here. Um, James, my recommendation to you is to write an amendment to saying that Robert's rule doesn't overthrow a constitution or like doesn't precede a constitution because I feel like it's just inappropriate to have this like it's just kind of going back and forth. And unless someone came to this debate with an amendment to vote on, I feel like it's a waste of our time as well. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mike. And so let's. Okay. We're not voting on anything. So with that being said, Mike, the new business section B, food for finals, you have the floor. Thank, thank you. And I, my can't. I switched to my um my computer because my thing doesn't. My phone died. So, oh, I, that that's in the process. Kenny, you don't need to have that up. Um, that's not done yet. That'll be done Tuesday. Um, this is just a call to action. I've sent you all an email. Um, with the sign up sheet. Someone should tell me that. Make sure you all got that email, by the way. Um, I had a great conversation with Armando and Larissa with CMI. Um, because Food for Finals is our event, we should be the ones staffing this event. Um, we should not, I mean, there should be no reason why we have the care center or we have the um, CMI uh, uh, events office. There's no reason why we should have them um, staff our event. And I think um, it's important for us to show up because we've had two events that I can think of at the moment, that one being the fair housing event and the second one kind of being the um, flagging event. One not happening and one only one person me, being me showed up to. So um, especially if we're paying for it. Thank you for um, adding that um, re as well. So I set this sign up sheet. Um, it's Excel kind of easy. You just highlight your availability. There are two five hour periods. Um, I'm going to be brushing on this every week till we get to it. We need, I want 100% council participation in this event. So um, that's all I have to say on this. Um, Chad, you're kind of helping me with this. You're kind of the co helper of this event. Do you have anything out on it? Nothing new that you haven't already said. Awesome. 
Thank you, Mike, for talking about that. Did anyone have any questions for Mike about food for finals? Any points of clarification for what you just said? Oh, sure, sure. Feel free, Chad. Floor is yours. I was just going to respond to to re in the chat um, that yes, absolutely, it is our event, um, and we can ask for help. But the majority of this work should be done and staffed by SGT SAC um, as as much as possible. As re, that, oh, my bad, no, Dan. No, I didn't. This is the chair situation. I'm just kidding. Uh, re, go ahead. Floor is yours. Um, is this only on Monday and Tuesday? That's the only choices. Oh, I, I can respond to that. Yes, it's Monday, Tuesday, 8 to 12, both days. And what are the dates? Um, Sorry. If it is the 5th. That's, I have forgotten. The 13th. 12th to the 13th. Thank you. Sorry. I was looking at a different date. And I also, I'll speak to, uh, I think that we should be able, we should staff this. Um, I remember going last year with the last council and they were all there and staffed it. And so I think it is, um, or at least there was representation from the council members that I had seen in the meetings. So I think it's really a responsibility and it'd be just good as our, as counselors to uh, just be there with the students saying, yeah, here's some food, you know, study hard, do good. We're here for you. Alrighty, Mike, did you have anything else? Yes. Can someone Go verify that that email went out? Like, can someone? Yeah. Steve like, did. Heard. Yes. Perfect. Love it. Thank you. Cool. So, having heard more about food for finals and having answered any questions, um, unless there's any stragglers, um, you know, we are still in new business. If anyone has anything incredibly pressing, you know, this is the point in the meeting where um, you could raise it prior to us uh, moving into public comment. And so, um, open floor if anyone has something pressing that we didn't get the time to address, anything they needed to say. All right, cool. Well, I appreciate a short meeting too, everyone. So we'll move to public comment. Um, you know, if there are any members of the public uh, online or in person, please let us know. We can, uh, we'd be happy to give you the floor. We'd love to hear what you have to say. All right. Going one more time for public comment. All right, hearing none, we'll move to close public comment. Uh, Mike, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, I was a little late to get to my hand. Um, one, I better just say one last thing. Everyone have a great break next week. Have some great rest, and I hope to see you all refreshed and uh, ready to work when we get back. Same to you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. It's a good, good holiday cheer. Uh, Alex. I would also like to echo that. I hope you all have a good break. And then I am also going to be putting in my formal resignation from the PR committee. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. And uh, all right. And thank you for the holiday wishes. All right. Um, so um, I move to adjourn the meeting. All right. You have a second? Second. Again. All right. Anyone opposed? Hearing none. Meeting adjourned.